Hey guys, welcome back to the desk with a random hole in it. I'm Rust Belt Collector and welcome to my channel. Today we are taking a look at something I'm really excited for. Angels Born in Hell. The Acid Rain Multi-Pack. I just got this in the mail and I should definitely give a minor disclaimer for those of you that are trying to track this set down. It's very, very popular from what I've seen and I did not order this. This isn't... Um, I ordered this, obviously, but I did not order this right away. I ordered this after people started getting their pre-orders in. So I'm a little bit behind the game in terms of getting this in my hands, which also unfortunately means that a lot of these are sold out. Now you still might be able to find him on Big Bad Toy Store or Pia Club. Pia Club is the, I think, Japanese importer, and obviously Big Bad Toy Store is well known in the community. I got this one through Pia Club. I do trust them. I've gotten multiple uh, Acid Rain figure packs through them. So uh, you should just check around and see what is in stock. And this one is quite a unique multi-pack because uh, for possibly the first time in at least what I'm aware of in Acid Rain history, you can actually buy each of these parts individually. You can buy the vehicle individually, this little robot individually, and then the figure, the figure of Caleb. You can get all those parts individually in separate packs, or you can get them just like I did in this Angels Born in Hell multi-pack, which I think is really cool. This artwork is really nice, and I think this also does include some exclusive accessories, whereas the individual packs do not. However, of course, let's dive into this. The box art is really nice, as usual. I mean, I say that with every single Acid Rain review. It is one of the highlights of the figures, apart from the figures themselves. Very nicely done, as usual. High quality cardboard. Warning, this is not a toy. 16 and up only. That's right, this isn't technically a toy line. It's a collectible line, I suppose. Um, either way, I treat them more or less like toys because I treat all toys the same. They go up on shelves and they look really pretty. That's, <laughs> that's kind of the name of the game. Um, yeah, so this is quite cool and quite standard for our Acid Rain line as it goes. You have a list of accessories there. Um, we'll get into those. I don't see the need in actually listing those off. This is part of the Ned At or Neo Atlantis. So I think also there was a camel bot with these same blue and orange markings. I, I wanted to pick it up. I put it off too long, I'm afraid, and I think I'm going to have to pay secondhand market, which I kind of refuse to do with Acid Rain line. Um, Acid Rain World, rather, and yeah, so I'm not going to do that and get that, but I love that color scheme, the light blue, like the cyan blue and the orange, the rusty orange. So there's the packaging. It's fantastic. It looks nice. It will uh, display well with your other boxes. I know some people that do displays with the individual boxes and stuff in like a Detolf case or something. But yeah, apart from that, let's take a look at the figures, because really, that's why we're here. And voila, there we go. The figures out of the packaging. They come in this like clamshell case type deal. Something that reminds me of the old VHS tapes we all had as kids that came in these plastic containers. But let's break this open. And inside we have all of the various accessories, vehicles, and figures. So we'll just kind of, I guess we'll just dive into them. Right off the bat, I see this guitar. Let's talk about this. A really, really nicely detailed guitar, definitely an electric, very similar to maybe like a Les Paul or something. I'm not not the best with knowing what guitars are, but this definitely looks like a classic electric guitar, something out of like the 60s or 70s, and it actually has that burnt orange and teal blue color on it, which is quite cool. No real strings, but hey, you know what, you can't have every little detail when you're working with the 118 scale does have a cloth strap though, which will wrap around the figure nicely, and little uh, little plastic buckles there. Next up we have this, which is, you know, you might think like a little crate or something like that, but actually it is the Babysitter BSC-4, a uh, little robot for the little babies that you saw in there. You can open up these little doors and it comes with some nice fluffy fabric so you can kind of store the children in there during uh, during transport as a way to keep them safe from outside hazards. It's got a nice transparent piece of plastic there, so they have their little their own little window to the world there. And then what you do is you pop these to the side here. And let's see, I had this open earlier, so I was trying to figure out 
just before doing a review, I wanted to make sure I knew how this worked, but you uh, pop those legs out like that, pop the little claws out, and just like that, and do that on the other side. Just like that, you end up getting all four of the little crab legs drop down, and then, and there you go. That's uh, that's what it looks like. You know, you can open up the little doors, the little, the little infants can go in there for transport. And I don't think, yeah, there's no articulation there. It's all just in the legs, ball joints there, hinge joints at these two little joints there. And initially out of the box, as is kind of typical with most of these, the joints can be a little bit stiff, but once you, uh, once you work them around a little bit, they uh, function very nicely indeed, and I don't feel like I'm going to break them or anything, which is always always nice with these premium figures, you know. You know, do treat them with some caution, but overall they can hold up to your normal poses and stuff like that, so nothing to worry about there. Next we have this little uh, backpack, which can hold, it looks like, both of the little infants. We'll take a look at that a little bit more closely later, but... That will just peg into the back of the action figure and will work very nicely. Then we have the ASM G6 submachine gun, just a nice sidearm for Caleb. Caleb is the uh, large figure there. Looks really nice. Not many, uh, not much paint apps there, but still a nicely sculpted weapon nonetheless. So there's that. Next we have an interchangeable tactical vest that can go on the Caleb figure. It has a little slot there for a baby bottle, which is really, really kind of clever. I do like that a lot. And uh, speaking of baby bottles, we have a little tiny, tiny baby bottle there and a gas mask. The gas mask can actually go on the uh, on the infant, if I'm not mistaken. We're going to have to figure out a way to actually get this open, though, because that is very tightly wrapped up. Well, uh, hang on one second. And there we go. Very, very small little items here. The little baby bottle, and if we can get that into focus, it doesn't even want to recognize that that's something to focus on. We do have the little gas mask there, and we'll show this with the, uh, the babies, but first let's do this. That can just go right into there, and that's a good place to store it because it's much less likely that I will lose this vest than it is that I will lose that very tiny little baby bottle, so that's always good. And next up, we have the two little bundles of joy. Uh, I didn't realize this, that they were actually named, but according to the box, we have Finn and Quinn. Does not uh, does not differentiate, but I guess if you want to just assume that the pink one is Quinn and the, the, I guess, like, white and yellow wrapped one is Finn, you can do that. I don't think it really matters. The face sculpts are identical, so there's no differences to be noted there. So, yeah, you have Finn and Quinn or Quinn and Finn, or however you want to have it, it doesn't really matter. There you go, and those can just, I believe, can you fit both? Uh, maybe you can only fit one. Even so, you can put one there, and then if you want to, we'll move the guitar, you can put the other one right in there, and keep it safe inside the babysitter robot. Always nice, and put that there, and so, by my understanding, you just as weird as it is, you just pop the face off, and it just it just pegs in there. And thankfully, that did not fall on the floor because that could have been lost very easily. But then you just take the gas mask and you just peg that into there, just like that. And that way, if you're traveling through a uh, a dangerous zone of some kind, they're protected. And uh, honestly, I I hate myself for saying this, but this kind of looks a little sus, don't you think? Maybe there's an imposter among us. Hmm? And I will never forgive myself for making that joke. So let's just switch that back over to a baby and tuck that away right in there. Perfect. There we go. We'll never mention that again. Um, before we look at Caleb, we'll save that for last. Let's take a look at this. Now, the box refers to this as a Maritime Preton. The Preton, I think, is the classification of this motorcycle, and the Maritime is in regards to this coloration, because the Camelbot was a Maritime Camelbot in this same light blue and orange. And I gotta say, this color pattern is just beautiful. I absolutely love it. The weathering is 11 out of 10. It is gorgeous. It reminds me heavily of something that would have come out of either Blade Runner or Fallout, or a combination thereof, and I mean, I love both those franchises, so there's no complaints from me at all. Um, so you have like the main motorcycle, and 
I believe if you were so inclined, you could unscrew this piece here, and actually just right there and right there. That would remove this sidecar, and you could just have the motorcycle, or you know, keep them assembled and have it be have it be both. And then there's this little slide out portion here. Uh, sliding it out all the way allows you to fit a full size figure on the seat here with the foot pedals down there. Also, if it's up close like this, you can stow the little the little baby carriage in there just like that. And also, this is kind of meant as a storage area for the babysitter bot. So if you slide this all the way back, I believe, I think that's all the way back. Uh, and then we fold this up just like that. Fold that up. Fold this up. We'll get this all bundled together here. It's almost like a little mini transformer of sorts. You just fold those legs in, the panels up, and then he, I'm not sure if it's meant to go like this. Eh, I guess it doesn't really matter. He's meant to kind of go right there. Uh, maybe there's a way that you can do it with the seat all the way pulled back. I don't exactly know, but I don't think it really matters. Either way, it can be stored right there. And that's how the box displays it, is having this on the sidecar. So however you want to display it, it works multiple different ways. And even, you know, you could have that with the, uh, the one baby inside and then pull this back just a little bit and snug that one in there and then you have both of them riding in the sidecar so really there's there's multiple ways you can do this and I'm just kind of going off of how the box displays it but overall I really really like it and again that coloration the orange and the cyan blue you really don't see that combination very many places and I am I am all for it I am I am here for it. Now, I have seen some people in the community showcase where you can take off this uh, this bubble, this shell piece in the front and reveal more of a stripped down like cafe racer style motorcycle. I have not figured out how to do that, so I apologize that this can't be uh, included in this particular review, but um, there is a way to do it. I've seen it done on other ones. I assume it starts by taking off this sidecar, which I really don't want to do here today. But this does come off. You can have just a standard motorcycle underneath and uh, you can remove the sidecar. And presumably you could take this off and reattach the sidecar if you preferred that more sleek and trimmed down motorcycle style. And now finally for the figure, kind of the, the main attraction, if you will, we'll get this out of the way. Here we have Caleb, the, uh, the protagonist of this particular scenario. I really like this figure. You know, with Acid Rain, a lot of the figures are militaristic. They're based on specific military units in the Acid Rain world. And this is just civilian dude, you know? And he's kind of tactical. He's got these little knee pads, you know? He's more of a, in my mind, he's more of a survivalist. You know, he's somebody that's like riding the wasteland, just trying to take care of the two little kids, whether they're his or maybe they're orphans. And uh, I should know the lore behind this character. There's probably something on the Acid Rain World website, but honestly, I kind of just bought this character because he's cool. The figure is cool, the accessories are cool, and yeah, it, it's kind of just the rule of cool when it comes to me and collecting action figures. I don't always go all in on the line. Sometimes I just go for the few cool ones that I see, and because the price point of Acid Rain, that is kind of how I treat the line. But getting up close on this figure, the detail is exactly what we would expect with Acid Rain. Very nicely detailed and weathered. I love this face sculpt with the wind-blown hair, the scar across one eye, and to be quite honest, he kind of looks like Mads Mikkelsen, uh, the guy that plays uh, Urso in Rogue One and a villain in Bond and several other movies. One of, my, uh, one of my more favorite actors, definitely, and I like having a face sculpt that's kind of similar. I don't know if anybody else sees it in him, but he just, to me, he looks like Mads Mikkelsen, and if there's ever a Angels Born in Hell movie, Mads Mikkelsen will be the one carrying the children across the wasteland. That's just my headcanon, but, you know, you never know. So, uh, one of the cool things with this is he has this little flexible, uh, flexible handkerchief, and... You can kind of, it'll take a little bit, maybe if I pop that, let me try and pop the head off first. Popping the head off definitely did help get that bandana up above the neckline there, but overall that looks pretty sweet, I guess. You know, he's given the gas mask to the children and he himself just has a hanky to keep out 
dust and radiation and whatever else, you know. And that can just be pulled down away from his face and uh, tucked back around his neck with just a little bit of finagling there. Yeah, not not too bad. It's a nice soft plastic, so it definitely can be, you know, smushed around a little bit to get it into the right position that you want it. And then, of course, he has these really cool, if that'll focus, he's got some really cool tattoos. I haven't been able to make out exactly what they are, but he's got a nice sleeve going down this arm, and then actually another sleeve going down here. And on this arm, he's got a series of numbers, so it's not binary, because it's actually like different numbers besides ones and zeros so there might be something to that I really don't know for sure but it's really cool to have a tattooed character in this line and just in general in the uh, 118 scale and overall yeah it's just a really really cool character in fact I just noticed here you know the red on his gauntlets here and the red on his shoes actually goes together quite nicely and overall it's just a really solid figure now to uh, to get the vest off, it's a little bit tricky. It's a uh, a bit more of a durable plastic, a little bit of a harder plastic, and so um, yeah, this vest is definitely the harder of the two to get off, but it will come off eventually. You just got to take it nice and slow, work it around those joints, and then once you get it free, it just comes right off. And uh, you probably could, although I didn't, you probably could just uh, pop these arms off and that might make it a little bit easier. But I try not to do that too frequently just in case the joints weaken over time. Um, but either way, you can then slip on this more tactical vest and it'll just slip over his head like that. I'm not going to snap it, but it does have those little snaps right there that you can push in. They are kind of tricky. I guess I'll try and do one here. But they are kind of tricky just because of uh, it's a softer plastic. It's made out of a soft plastic, and it doesn't often want to actually peg in, um, as you can kind of see there. So I'm not going to mess with that too much here on camera. But it does work eventually if you uh, <laughs> if you work it the right ways. And then to attach the backpack, I found it easier to attach it to the uh, the vest first, and then line it up like that with the peg hole in his back. And then that attaches much more easily than if you just tried to line the both of them up at the same time. But there's that, and you know that sits on him rather nicely. It definitely looks better if it was uh, if it was tabbed in together. But he can have that tactical carrier. Looks really nice, and uh, yeah, I think though I prefer just because of the proportions of his shoulders. I think I'm going to prefer this vest over this tactical vest. That's just my take, um, you know, and it's totally customizable, so you can definitely display him however you like, but I just think this fits the mood so much more for this particular character, you know? And now for the articulation on this figure. Up at the head, it's a double ball jointed system, so there is a ball joint here in the head, and then there's a ball joint in the torso, so although that bandana is maybe a little bit restrictive, you still do get a good range there forward and back. It's a really highly posable figure. In fact, this is pretty much standard for the Acid Rain line in general. Really do appreciate that. Then at the shoulders, there's a ball joint that just kind of pegs into the torso. Uh, doesn't really give you a lot of range upward. This is about as upward as you can get, but it does act as sort of a pseudo butterfly joint, allowing you some forward and backwards roll. And then if you need it to reach upwards, you can just swivel that joint all the way around and it kind of has the same function, I guess, as it would if it was able to get a little bit higher here. There is a bicep swivel here, but it is kind of underneath this little shoulder bell piece and it does make it a little bit difficult to turn. So I'm not gonna stress that too much, but it is there and it can be turned for uh, a variety of different poses. The elbows are single jointed which gets you to a nice crunch of a little past 90. I do wish that those uh, joints weren't colored gray but I guess you could just pretend like he's got elbow pads on or something like that I guess. It's you know it, it could have been it could be better it could have been cast in a more flesh tone color but eh, it's not the end of the world for me. I still I still really like this figure. Uh, and then for the hands swivel in and out hinge as usual on the left, and then swivel up and down hinge on the uh, the right hand, the trigger hand. And that's again very standard for this figure line. And then for the torso, there is a ball joint up at the top there, and then a ball joint here below. And that does give you a pretty good range of motion side to side though, and, and up and down, but 
Unfortunately, this more hard plastic vest does inhibit that just a little bit, not too much, but a little bit. And I did notice with mine also, this, this bottom joint pops out rather easily. Not super easy, but um, it might be something that could wear out over time for, for me. I don't know if other people have experienced that with theirs. But I do know some tricks to uh, to fix that if it ever did become a problem. For right now, I still have to apply a decent amount of force to actually unpeg that so it's not uh, a dangerous issue or anything like that. Just something to, I guess, you know, keep an eye on. If it does get worse over time, then it might be something to look into and something to repair. But then moving down to the hips, we have the standard ball joints and thigh swivels that we've come to expect. You can get a pretty good outward there. You can get forward to a seated position, backwards, thigh swivel, double jointed knees, gets you to a really nice crunch there. And then down at the foot, forward, down, and then of course the uh, side to side rocker there. So overall, really nice. Again, pretty much standard for acid rain. Like it's not anything that revolutionizes the line, but I think that they've already had a really solid figure base to start with. So. Nothing that I really need to see uh, changed or improved there. As for the figure fitting onto the bike, uh, it's more of a hunched over, again, kind of a cafe racer style bike. So if you get him in there, and then you gotta fix his hands to the, uh, to the handlebars, it's gonna be more of a hunched over position like this. And that's kind of a, you know, five minute pose. I'm not really taking too much time on that, but he can also look really cool kind of sitting back and being more relaxed in the driver's seat there. Probably a bit more like a, uh, a display here. This would be something more akin to what you might have it displayed like on a shelf. And again, it looks really, really nice. Of course, we can't forget posing him with the guitar. I'm gonna flex his hand out just a little bit to wrap it around that. The guitar, I think, is... <laughs> It's a little oversized. This is a little extreme, even for even for like 118 Acid Rain. This is almost like he's playing an upright bass. I mean, it's a little silly. And I think that does probably come down to the fact that if it were smaller, uh, that would probably lead to some brittleness and some easily broken pieces. But unfortunately, uh, I would rather have that than him carrying around a guitar that is literally as large as him. That's that's kind of the biggest disappointment that I have with this set. Overall, I love it. I love the coloration, the design, and just all of that combined. But that guitar and his torso joint popping apart that easily are two, not issues, but just things that I'm like, man, that could have been better. You know, it could have been, for such a, uh, a nice set, it could have been designed just that much more. And if it was smaller and cast in maybe a softer plastic, that could have been a solution possibly. Similar to how the World of Halo figures do their uh, their weapons, they cast them in a softer, flexible plastic just so they're not going to break on you when you pose them with the figures. But uh, yeah, that's, that's where we're at. It is what it is. It is what they chose to do, and we just kind of have to be okay with that. But before we wrap things up, let's do a quick little comparison actually with this figure and some of the other figures that would fit alongside it in terms of scale. So first off, here he is next to the retro G.I. Joe collection line uh, Cobra Officer. That is a standard three and three quarter inch figure, so as you can see, they actually line up really nicely. This guy could definitely fit in with a G.I. Joe collection if you felt so inclined. Additionally, here he is next to a Star Wars figure, the uh, Clone Wars Clone Trooper here. He's actually taller, so that kind of makes me think he's a little bit more closer to a true 118 scale than the 3 and 3 quarter inch scale, which isn't a big deal. I think they can blend in still pretty well together, but just keep in mind he will be taller. And then, in case you want to incorporate him into the world of Halo, he actually lines up really nicely with the Spartans, because Spartans, of course, would be taller. They'd be somewhere in like the 6 foot, 6 foot 5 range. This actually lines up pretty well. I think the height comparison here is fairly accurate to what Spartans would be to a normal human. If not perfectly, then pretty closely. You know, nothing nothing too specific there, but still really nice. And of course, you know, another Acid Rain figure, he, he scales perfectly with that. Nothing, nothing really surprising about that, that he fits in with his own line. But since we've seen discrepancies before between figures in the same line with other toy lines, it's always good to just just double check that particular fact. 
And for a final comparison, here he is next to a standard railroad spike. It's important to get this just comparison in because you never know. You just never know when you're going to need a good railroad spike. Very sturdy, very well made, and you never know when one of these will come in handy in your toy display. But anyways, there we go. I think that pretty much wraps up all the things that need to be talked about about this. I think it's really an awesome set. Even if, you know, you maybe don't want all the pieces, maybe you just want the bike and Caleb, you can get those separately. Like I mentioned, you just might miss out on a couple of the accessories. Because um, like I said, the, there's three different packs that you can get. You can get Caleb individually, the bike individually, and this little... Uh, this baby carrier, babysitter robot separately, or you can get them all together the way that I did, and it's really just up to you and also what's in stock, because that could be a problem. I don't really know. I haven't checked uh, since I ordered this uh, about a month ago, because it kind of took a little bit with the current shipping situation, but anyways, yeah, um, check around if you are interested in picking one of these up for yourself. Big Bad Toy Store or Pia Club are the two go-to places for Acid Rain right now. I don't know of any other distributors at the moment, but there you go. Uh, definitely check that out. Also, links down in the description in case you want to check out my Instagram, or um, if you want to order anything through Entertainment Earth, you can pre-order or order any in-stock items through that link. Helps out the channel. I do appreciate that so much. And as always, thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful evening, noon, or night. Be kind to one another, and I will catch you all in the next video.